you can do some pretty cool things in just HTML and CSS. And in this video, I'm gonna show you 10 things that you can do to level up your web projects. Let's go. So let's just go ahead and open up a live server here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, and let's go ahead and add just a couple like baseline styles. We'll say padding zero, we'll do margin zero. And I'm gonna give a font family here of Montserrat. There we go. So number one here is just, it's a gradient background. I know it's like, it's easy to do, but it's, I think it's something that looks pretty cool and you can use it to level up your projects and just makes it stand out a little bit than like a plain old boring background. So we're gonna apply this to the body. All we have to say is background. We'll say linear gradient, open up our parentheses. And this will take three things. So it'll take a degrees and then the uh, hex codes, the colors that we wouldn't give it to. So we'll do a black here. Then I'm gonna send it over here to like a blue. Then we just need to give the width. So I'll say width, we'll say 100%. We need a height, I'll say 100 viewport height. So the full height of the screen. And I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit, but that's our background. I think it looks pretty cool. It's just something that stands out a little bit more than a plain blue background or a plain black background, whatever. Number two, we're gonna do a tilt effect. This can make something disappear whenever we hover over it, right? And not just using like a hidden CSS property. So I'm gonna create a div here and I'll just say, card tilt, you can say, you can call it whatever you want. And let's shrink this down a bit because the majority of this is just gonna be CSS. We'll say card tilt. And let's go ahead and define its dimensions so we can see it on the screen. We'll say height, we'll say 100 pixels, width 100 pixels. We'll give it a background of light blue. Let's go ahead and save so we can see it on the screen. And let's just give it a little margin. 100 pixels so we can see it stand out a little bit. Now, whenever we hover on this, we want it to kind of slide over and disappear. So we'll say transform perspective. We can just say like a thousand pixels. So this is what we want. Next, we want to transition. We'll say transform one, one second. Now let's just add our hover properties. We'll say card tilt hover. And inside here, we'll say transform. We'll say rotate Y. We'll say 90 degrees, rotate X 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and save. Now, whenever we hover on this thing, kind of disappears. So super easy to do, but kind of a cool effect. I like hovering just on and off of it. Hovering's cool. Next, we're gonna do like a glass morphism card. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna start giving these, I'll say glass morphism card, if you want. And I'm just gonna give this a class glass card. And I'll give it a P tag of glass morphism, something like that in here. We can't see it yet because it's black. You can see it kind of right there. So let's come over here. We'll say glass card. I'm gonna give it a background and we'll do RGBA. No, I'm basically white. So I'll say 255 and I'm gonna say 0.2. Let's go even lower. We'll say 0.1 and I'll do the same for the border. One pixel solid. And I'm just gonna use this same RGBA here. I'm gonna do a backdrop filter. Blur 10 pixels. We'll say color white. Say padding 20. Ooh, 20 pixels. Width 300. Let's say margin 20 pixels. Just kind of sticks out a little bit. Now what this is gonna do is kind of give a glass effect to uh, whatever element is, is below it, right? So if we change this blue up here, if we change it to like a uh, red, for example, you can see we'll be able to see a red through this. So now you can see it's like kind of red below that. You could put it over like a picture. You can kind of see the picture of blur throughs, kind of have that glass morphism look. So I think that looks pretty cool. All right, let's go back to blue here. I'm just gonna comment that out. And I'm, next I'm gonna do an animated gradient border. So say animated gradient border on here, create a div with a, we'll say animated gradient. So let's give it some class here. So we'll say animated gradient. And inside here, we'll say width of 200 pixels. We'll say height 100 pixels. We'll say border five pixels solid. Next we can say border image. We'll say linear gradient we just have to give it a position, so we can say like 45 degrees. Now we just add in some hex codes. We'll add a green, we'll add a purple, then we'll add this blue here. And we'll just say one. Then we wanna give it an animation. Gradient border, we'll say two seconds, infinite. I just noticed the class name was different here, so let's just go ahead and fix that. 
There we go. So now we can see the gradient border, but we need to add some keyframes so it looks like it's actually moving. So we'll say add keyframes. We can say gradient border. We'll open this up. We'll have a 0%. So we're going to start. We'll say border image source linear gradient. We have to give it a starting point. We'll say 45 degrees. Let's just go ahead and copy this down. Paste it in here. Get rid of this here. Next, let's just change the color. F3, 1, 2, 6, 1. Then we'll keep that purplish in the blue. I'm going to shrink this down a bit. And let's go up to halfway. We'll say 50%. Then the same thing, the border image source. I'm just going to copy this here. Paste it in. And let's just change some of these colors. This purple. We'll use this blue up here. And then we'll use this red here at the end. And we'll do the same thing. We'll say 100%. And we'll just copy this down. We'll use this red and this purple, and we'll stick with that blue on the end. Let's go ahead and save. And now we have a border gradient that's kind of like changing colors and looks cool. It stands out a little bit. So for number five, let's go to a skeleton loader, kind of animated. We'll say skeleton. I'm going to comment this out here so we can see what we're doing a little better. So for our skeleton, we'll come down here. We'll say skeleton. We're going to start with a background. We'll say linear gradient. Then we'll just say 90 degrees. We'll use this kind of the white and gray kind of going back and forth. And let's get rid of this card tilt too. We'll, we'll go ahead and hide that for now. Then next, we're going to give it a size. So I'll say background size. We'll say 200% on 100%. We'll give it an animation and we're going to add a keyframe too. We'll say shimmer 1.5 seconds and we'll say infinite. Now, so we can just see it on the screen. We'll give it a height and a width. We'll say height and then width 400. I'm going to say border radius five pixels. Let's go ahead and save. Next, let's add some keyframes here so we can actually see the animation. We'll say at keyframes, shimmer at 0%. We'll say background position, 200%, zero. We'll do the same for 100%. We'll say background position, minus 200%. Go ahead and save. And now you can see this little kind of gray loading effect that you see while websites are loading. Next, we have to do responsive grid. I get so many questions about grid, about making things responsive. And it's like, it could be kind of difficult and just kind of tedious, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be. So in here, we'll say, uh, we'll create a div and then we're gonna have a grid item. And this is something that'll display beautifully on large devices, small devices. It's just gonna work. So I'll just say item in here. I'm gonna copy this down a few times as well. So let's come down here. We'll say grid. And we want to display this, of course, as grid. Next, we'll say grid template columns. And we'll say repeat. We want to say auto fit. And inside here, we're going to say min max. And this is like the min max. This is like the, the smallest uh, width that we want each child element to be. In this case, I'm going to say 100 pixels and one fractional unit. So basically, the smallest that I want a child div to be is 100 pixels. And we'll just give it a gap of... 10 pixels. Cool. So next we'll do grid item and we'll just give it a color. We'll say background. We'll say CCC so we can see it. And we'll just say P20 and text align center. So now if we open this up and inspect, you can see that this is 190 pixels on the width. If we go down to mobile devices, inspect it again, you can see it's 136. So no matter how low this goes, it's gonna not go below 100 pixels on the width for the for each tile element. Let me shrink this back down. We actually add in a whole lot of divs in here. You can see as we open the screen, get larger, they kind of form on one line and they continue to grow. So this is a real easy way to make websites responsive and have things laid out and displayed as you would expect them to. So let's just go ahead and comment this out for now. And what I'm gonna do next is like a glowing text like a text shadow glow. We'll say text shadow glow. You know what? Let's go back here. We'll just do this H2 instead. So we'll say H2 text shadow glow. Since all it's going to be is text and come here inside here. We'll say text shadow glow, just like that. Let's give it a color so we can actually see it. Oh, I thought I typed something in there. We'll say text shadow. Okay, there we go. 
Now, right before, below the color here, we'll say text shadow, say zero, zero, 10 pixels. We'll give it the shadow color, zero, zero, D five, F one. This is the position of the shadow. We'll say zero, zero, then 20 pixels. Then we'll do that same zero, zero, D, 5f1. And in this value here, we can kind of change, uh, if we drop this down to zero, for example, kind of lessens the shadow effect, and you can play with this. Same on this first one, if you drop, bump it up to 20, you can see it's a lot stronger. Then you go down to 10, it shrinks back down. Cool, so next, let's comment that out. And what we're gonna do next is like some bouncing animation. And this is something you can add to any element, uh, picture, image, div, anything that you want on the screen. I'm just gonna say bounce. And in this case, it'll just be We'll say bounce over here. We'll just make it like a ball, like a color. So we'll say background, let's give it that color. We'll say 349, 8D, B, kind of like a blue. Let's give it a height of 50 pixels. We'll give it a width, 50 pixels. We'll say margin top, 100 pixels. Let's go ahead and save. And then we'll do C, border, radius, 50%. Now I'm gonna say animation, bounce, one second, infinite. Now let's give it the keyframe. Lots of keyframes here. You can do some really cool stuff with keyframes. I'll say at keyframes, bounce, we'll say 0%, 100 to 100%. We're gonna transform, translate Y, we'll say zero. We'll just copy this down. We'll just change this to 50%. We'll just change this to negative 30 pixels. So kind of a cool way you can add a bounce effect to something on the screen. Again, it could be a picture or any other HTML element that you wanna use. So let's move on here. Next, we're gonna be using like a text stroke effect. So let's come down here and I'll just say text stroke. I'll say this is stroke text. We'll go ahead and save. And inside here, we'll say text stroke. I'll say font size. I'm gonna say four rim so we can see it pretty well. Then we'll say color transparent. If you don't know what stroke text is, Basically, we're saying like, we're giving like a text with a border, but no no color, no background, no fill on the inside. So we'll save that. And then we'll say dash dash webkit text stroke, two pixels. Then we can just give it a color. We'll use one of our colors from up here. I'm gonna give it an extra dash there. <laughs> there we go. Give it a save. So now you can see we have that text with the like uh, empty inside. And you can add like a bigger stroke. If you go too high, it'll probably like, close off and it'll look like it's filled kind of like, just like that. Uh, but you can take care of that just increasing the font size as well. So next we're gonna do text clipping. Text clipping is awesome. I think it's a cool feature. And it's something you can like, you know when you see text and you see um, the image through a text or like a gradient through a text, that's what text clipping is. We're gonna do that right now. So we'll just do an H1 and we'll just say, Clipping effect, this is text clipping, go ahead and save. So inside here, we'll say clipping effect. I'll say font size for rim. I'll say text align center, just so it shows the middle page. So if we do a background first, I'll just say background. We'll do a background and then of like a gradient and then we'll do a picture. So we can say linear gradient, choose your direction. We'll say 90 degrees so it comes in from the side. We'll choose a color, we'll say FF 6A00. The next color, DC006A. Then here we'll say background clip text. We'll say WebKit background clip text. We'll say WebKit text fill color transparent. So now you can see we have that gradient from like an orange to a, a lighter red. Now you can also do this with a picture. So if we go to like Unsplash, for example, and get a picture, Unsplash is just stock photography and find a picture that looks cool. None of those look cool. I'll just say abstract. I was hoping to find a lighter one. Let's try something like this. This looks weird. <laughs> Let's click on that. And we just gonna grab the copy image address. Come back here. Instead of the background linear gradient, we'll just copy that out. We'll do the same thing. We'll say background, not color, just background. We'll say URL. We're just gonna paste in that URL. Let's come down here. Yeah, there we go. So it's working now, but what we wanna say is background, repeat, no repeat. This is gonna display just a little bit better. We'll say background, position, center. So now we can actually see that image through the text. So if we try another picture, for example, let's see what else we got in here. I'm trying to see like a lighter one so we can actually see it come through. We'll try this one as well. 
paste that in there. So you can see, now you can see the picture coming through. I'm all over the place here. Now you can see the picture coming through through the text. I think that's a pretty sweet uh, feature that you can do with just CSS. And for the final one here, I'm not sure what we're on, 10 or 11, whatever it is, we're gonna do like a shape morphing. So we'll just say morph shape, just a div, if I can even spell that right. We'll say morph shape, something like that. Then we'll come down here and we'll just say morph shape. And I'm just gonna copy that out. Comment that out, there we go. So let's just define a width so we can actually see it on the screen. Okay, we'll say margin 20 pixels. We'll give it a background. Um, let's just use this color here. Go and save, should see it on the screen. And I'm gonna give this a border radius of zero, which is no, no curved edges. Then I'm gonna say transition border radius 0.5 Let's say 0.5 S ease, then transform 0.5 S ease. Let's go ahead and save. Now we just need to add the hover selector. So we'll say morph shape hover. And whenever we hover this thing, we want a nice smooth transition to a circle. So this is what we want it to morph into. We'll say border radius. We want it to morph into 50%. And we'll say transform rotate 50 degrees. Or if we say 45 degree to make it right hard angle. So now when we hover this thing, you see it kind of shrinks down into a circle and kind of changes its position to a circle. So these are 10 things that you can do in CSS that aren't like incredibly cool or mind blowing by themselves. But if you can add these to your projects one at a time or just like different parts of your portfolio website or any part of the project you're working on, it just kind of helps like add it, give some extra fluff and just kind of levels up your portfolio or web project. So if you thought it was cool, learn something, or maybe just a little refresher, smash the like button. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.